You're watching Detroit's Confident Naturals TV. Hi, my name is Gerald Pacman Dixon the second, and I play the saxophone. Basically, uh, Gerald, he, he embodies all of those qualities, like when I see him. Um, just to recap, people, person, dedicated, uh, committed, willing worker. He embodied all of those characteristics, and those kind of people stick out to me when considering leaders because, um, again, they're, they're all qualities that go into a good leader. And, uh, so, you know, we, we, stay con we stay connected throughout our time there. Um, there were many times where we would just, you know, sit and have talks about ministry and, and um, have talks about uh, just the organization, the choir. And I would just share with him, you know, a lot of the knowledge that I, that I gained from my... Mm -hmm. you, you don't come... You come across people who will hear what you say, and then it goes in one ear and out the other, but you can tell um, from his actions following the talk, you can tell that he really wanted to do things right, you know, he really wanted to succeed, so he was willing to be open to people who had more knowledge than he, than he did, and um, yeah, I appreciate that quality in him, and it made for you know, a, a great experience, both musically and um, uh, just a great working relationship as well. Are there any experiences um, during your time while, while he is director in the choir that you can think of that made him um, go over and beyond? I know you said he was committed and he's dedicated, but was there any instance like, um, you know, he did this for this one person when he didn't have to or anything of that sort? Any Anything that stands out in your mind about that? Hmm. Trying to think. Um, I'm sorry. It's been a it's been a minute. Uh, You're fine. Choir day. You're uh, fine. Um, something that stuck out that he did. You're saying. Uh huh. Some something that was over and beyond. Like he didn't have to do this. He probably shouldn't did it, did it, but because he was a leader, he did it, and he did it wonderfully, or anything like that. Um. Oh, okay. Well, we can we can really we can really talk about um. We can talk about him uh, playing mm -hmm. um, sometimes for the choir. Um. That was completely out of his comfort zone. Um, that wasn't—it's not his main instrument. Um, playing, playing the key, playing the keys specifically. That's not his main instrument. And um, it's 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 an amazing thing you can see someone who sees a need, and although they may not be as skilled in a certain area, they're willing to put their hands to it or do what it takes to make sure that the need is fulfilled. So, um, that personally, that was something that really, um, stuck out really, really, uh, big time to me. Um, because he was willing to forego all of the personal things that we go through when we're deciding whether we're going to do something, all of the insecurities and all of that stuff. He's willing to forego all of those things just because he saw that the organization had a need. I don't know if that answers your question or if you were trying to, if you were thinking about something a little uh, more. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's perfect. Besides the piano, was there anything else that, that you really got him into besides that? I think he just mentioned how he, he wasn't playing the saxophone for the, the choir, but um, was there anything anything else he did as far as that? He didn't really go too much into his choir days. Um, 
Um, Gerald played, he played saxophone at some point. Well, he played saxophone under, under my leadership. He also did uh, the keys. Um, he filled in on drums. So, I mean, it was just a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of everything, kind of like whatever we needed. And he was available for it. Um, he did uh, have the opportunity to uh, to, to uh, like teach um, the actual choir uh, vocally at a point, um, and it just it just showed to me it just showed a, a unwavering, I guess, tenacity uh, as far as like he he didn't want to limit himself from being all that he could within the organization. So he was willing to kind of have his hands in a little bit of everything. Um, in order to get into the, the MSU choir, was there any requirements? Um, and if so, how did he how did he do as far as that goes? Um, as far as MSU choir is concerned, MSU got choir, there, there aren't really any requirements or um what do you say uh i guess auditions or anything like that you know it's kind of like an open door for whoever um wants to be a part uh so it, it really wasn't like a, a process or for him to, to get on board you know he um i mean we see, we saw that he, he played, and um, the current, I mean, the band director, um, <clears throat> which was Ryan Davis at the time, you know, he, he reached out and uh, brought him in, and it was kind of history from there. Post-graduating, um, uh, Gerald, he, he ended up working with the epicenter of... Uh-huh. Some some church. Did you guys um, get him into that? Did you did you help him along in that way, or did he do it himself, or how did that work out? Um. Well, as far as as far as epicenter um, epicenter of worship is what the church brought. Um. As far as epicenter of worship, the pastor uh, of the church was actually our uh, outside spiritual advisor. Uh, for the choir, so um, a lot of the students from the actual from the uh, ministry actually went to that church, and uh, he went to that church. And um, again, it's just one of those things. Anything that he's a part of, he kind of sees see, see what he can do to put his hands um, into making it better and. He just kind of did that himself. <laughs> you know, I didn't. I, I can't take any credit for getting him back. You know, he just came to me and he got involved. <laughs> um, if you were to give Gerald any any additional advice um, for where his career should go right now, I, I think he's doing pretty well. But um, if he, if you were to give him any advice or any obstacles to watch out for, anything of that sort, any tips, what, what do you think you would give to him? Um, For like future success and, and things of that sort. Uh, he seems pretty optimistic already, but you know, anything else? Uh, advice that I would give um, Gerald would be I want to make sure that you're surrounded by uh, people who are who are bucket fillers and who who are really um, who want to see you succeed as much as you want to see yourself succeed. Um, a lot of times we surround ourselves with people who who don't really support our visions like we need them to, and a lot of times if they're not supporting it, then they're pulling away, and uh, so. It's that's important um, to it's just to you know remain focused. Um, one of the, one of the most difficult things 
in the music industry, it seems like it's hard to, to remain focused and, and stay motivated because, um, you know, there, there, there are a lot of ex- extreme highs and extreme lows that you, you deal with just being an artist of any kind. And um, you have to keep your eyes focused on uh, whatever your end goal is or whatever you vow to do or whatever you want your music to do. Um, like, for instance, if your, your vow is to make music that will positively affect people, uh, affect the, the mood, you know, bring their spirits up and all that stuff, then that's just something that you will have to focus on and keep in the forefront of your mind even in those times of extreme events. Uh, so, you know, this, it's, 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 mo- it's more of a thing about focus and then keeping, um, keeping your, your main reason or main purpose about why you pursue what you're doing, keeping that at the forefront. Because uh, the moment that it becomes a task and a, and a job, is, that's the moment that passion is removed from it. So passion has to stay in. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not. Like, mm, my thoughts are kind of like scrambled, but. <laughs> <laughs> you're um, fine. You're fine. But that's that, yeah. So, <laughs> um, I guess to kind of tie all of that together, um, keeping your purpose at the forefront and never losing your never losing your passion for what you do. Okay, awesome. Alrighty. Um, I believe that's all I have for now. I may call you back a little later. Um,